Get my six! Defecto de Brujas! Lead the way! Let's do this thing! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the most awesomest homesteading channel on the entire internet that has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with homesteading. Today kind of has to do with has to do with several things. For example, how about the fact that only my second video from a few days back on my second day back in the US here in Virginia, we potentially Cap well, we captured something, and potentially it was a Bigfoot Sasquatch. In the video, go back and watch it if you missed it. Um, viewers spot Bigfoot Sasquatch lurking behind him, something like that. 13 minutes and 15 seconds. Don't want to waste your time. Get up. Ah. All right, so it looks like this is a location to keep your eye on. So uh, we had people. One lady commented, I'm, it's too hot for this hat. One lady commented that she's been watching my videos for years and that she actually saw something this time. Isn't that wonderful? But today is also about, well, we're going fishing here soon. That's why I'm out here. You can tell by as high as the sun is, it's like midday now. It's like noon. We're going fishing. Uh, so I'm not going to be here this evening to make a video in the evening, but we could potentially still see him, her, it, or they moving around in the background. So, um, it's about taking advantage of opportunities. It's about not just noticing your blessings, but uh, uh, taking advantage of your blessings, your opportunities, gratefulness, things you're grateful for. And it's about people being butthurt because I'm kind of experiencing some reverse culture shock. Okay, first of all, did I get a haircut? No, it's in a ponytail. Again, um, I was gonna get my hair cut in the Philippines, but all these old Karens, on my sick twisted humor Facebook channel when I go live or make videos they always say get a haircut get a haircut you look ridiculous well one of the ways I get paid on Facebook is through interactions with content so every time they make those comments it's like cha-ching 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 so I was like I literally make a lot of money every month because people tell me I need a haircut so I didn't get my haircut now I know uh, miserable people being as miserable people are. They'd find something else to complain about, but I didn't want to bank on that. Remember, a bird in a hand is worth two in the bush. So, huh. Now, also, this morning I went live on Sick Twisted Humor there on Facebook. I want to welcome everybody who's coming to the YouTube channel from Facebook. I want to give a personal welcome to River Sage. That's a beautiful name. It's actually a moniker uh, that she uses on um on on uh, Facebook, but her real name's Tanya. Tanya, if you've come over, welcome. Um, but this morning, somebody was butthurt because I was making the video in my bathrobe. What'd she say? <clears throat> um, I like your content, but I'm uncomfortable with your live streams because you're usually half naked. Because in the Philippines, it was 90-something degrees every day, and I usually didn't even wear a shirt when I would make a Facebook reel or a video. I was usually at the beach. I mean, come on. What, am I supposed to put on my winter coat when I'm on the beach and it's 94 degrees Fahrenheit? So anyway, I was live in my robe this morning, and uh, she said she felt uncomfortable in the presence of half-dressed men she didn't know. Seriously, you are at home on a gadget looking at somebody who is in their home on a gadget. So you know what I do when people tell me to do certain things or not to do certain things, right? You know this cantankerous, trifling, crazy late guy, right? Here's a hint. They say get a haircut, what I do? Didn't get a haircut. So they're telling me to get dressed, put a shirt on. What do I do? Well, how about we do this? Ah, that's better. Soaking up this sun. It's going to be 
it's close to 70 right now. It's going to be in the 70s this afternoon. We're going fishing. We're going trout fishing. Listen, last year we went trout fishing once at Douthat Lake State Park. Met some wonderful people uh, that we fished with there. And, um, but that's the only time we went. And I was so happy because that was the first time I'd been trout fishing in like 15 years. Grew up trout fishing, moved to Virginia, uh, <clears throat> mostly fish for catfish now uh, but sometimes bass catch a lot of sunfish um <clears throat> yeah it's the spring pollen and i already ran i went out and ran three miles this morning and it was wonderful that's why i'm wearing the tights i'm not doing my robin hood men in tights thing with the with the sword with um detecto de brujas This is where we saw him, her, it, or they just the other day. Actually, I think we were at a slightly different angle. Okay, yeah, we were like right here, and we saw this, what appeared to be a large, dark, bipedal, up, up walking creature come through here, and then I blocked it with my head as it went around. So, in the past, when we've done night hunts, let me adjust my chair a little. I'm going to be staring into the sun from this direction a little bit, but... I actually kind of like to do that. That's one of my pastimes, just stare into the sun. I won't do that too much today. But um, when we come out and do night hunts, there appears to be a portal here. It, you can't see it during the day. Like you see trees, you see trees everywhere, right? But think back on some of those night hunts, it's like there's a portal. And interestingly, this is where we saw the, the large dark figure in the video from a few days ago. So keep looking back here. This is what, this is what, uh, Detecto de Brujas is saying, anyway, right back in here. All right, so, but hurt people, having a little bit of reverse culture shock um, now that we're back in the U.S. <clears throat> the first one would have come at the grocery store this past weekend, but we were prepared for it. So, in the Philippines, we were used to getting an entire cart filled with food entire grocery store shopping cart filled with food for approximately eighty dollars well we came back and then saturday we went to the store got an entire cart full of groceries for four hundred dollars but we knew that was coming so we weren't that shocked um but here, here here's where it came in so yesterday my son had his first football practice for the spring now we missed the first week because we weren't back yet but yesterday was the first practice and um I've sworn to be water boy. We switched teams. Uh, it, nothing, it wasn't because of anything wrong with our old team that we've been with for five years. Had nothing to do with the head coach. I was the assistant. The man is a personal friend of mine. Uh, that remains the case to this day. Basically, what we wanted to do is we wanted to get Daniel in an entirely new environment where he didn't know any of the players, or at least as far as how they, they played. He knows half the team from his old school when he was in the public school. Um, and we wanted to have new coaching staff who didn't have him, you know, pegged as, you know, you're the quarterback. Uh, we, we wanted him, we wanted to see how he could perform in an entirely new unknown environment. So we had that practice yesterday. And so, and, I, and I'm water boy. I don't want to be the coach. I want it to be all about him, nothing about me. So I'm the team manager. So I take snacks and drinks, uh, and equipment like cones and stuff, stuff I've, acquired and accumulated over the year as a coach um i take this all to the practices and the games and then that relieves parents usually parents take turns like this is your weekend to get stuff this is your weekend to get stuff um daniel's an only child with me and dearly so that's a luxury we know a lot of parents don't have a lot of parents met three different parents yesterday that have four kids they are so overextended number one with time occasionally with resources like money so we kind of feel like being responsible for the snacks and the drinks every practice every game is our way of contributing because it relieves those folks who probably have their other three kids in other sports and they're probably being required to take snacks and drinks you know at least one one weekend out of the season there for that so we wanted to kind of alleviate some of the pressure from that so we get there and uh they're doing some basic drills for, for 20 minutes or so. And then it comes time to start running some plays. And we told Daniel, we've been telling him all winter, listen, do what the coaches tell you to do. I'm not going to be out there on the field instructing. 
Um, certainly not going to be designing plays, making play calls, being the offensive coordinator like I've done for the last five years. I'm going to be a water boy. I'm going to be over there on the sidelines. I see, you know, it's water break. Make sure all the kids have water. And again, half of them yesterday came to practice without water. And that's just how it goes. And again, it's not because they have absentee parents or deadbeat parents. Because those parents are probably making sure the other three kids had water for one for the soccer, one for the baseball. And it just turns out that the kid that went to the flag football somehow got overlooked. These people, and they're wonderful people. We befriended a lot of these folks. They're just stretched so thin. So, again, we know how blessed we are to have one, you know. <clears throat> so, it comes time to run plays. The coach, who we just met yesterday in person, uh, walks up to Daniel and hands him the ball and says, Here, QB. They knew who he was. Everybody knew who he was. The kid's got the best arm in the league. Um, so, anyway... We told Daniel, if they put you at receiver, catch. If they put you running back, run. If they put you on defense, defend. Just do whatever. We're not going to go in there and say, hey, I want to be quarterback. And Daniel's attitude about it is he 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 wants to do all of it. And actually, in, in the tail end of practice yesterday, once he'd thrown out his arm, he actually asked if he could be a receiver. And he can catch as good as he can throw. Because for the hours a day, for the last five years, that him and dad's been out here in the field in front of the house, practicing football he has been catching as much as he's been throwing because i got to throw the ball back to him right so um here comes some reverse culture shock part of the culture in the philippines and and if you come from the west and especially if you come from america like me it can be somewhat offensive in the beginning because um it's Listen, I know we live in a culture here in the U.S. where most people want everything to be sugar-coated, especially the truth. No, I'm not one of those people. I'm not woke. I'm not a snowflake. Uh, say it like it is. If I don't like the facts, if it's within my control to do so, I'll change the facts. Because if the truth hurts, it probably is supposed to be painful, so you'll make a change and do something different, right? Um, but there are some things that don't need to be said, okay? Uh, like, here's an example. So when we're in the Philippines, we stopped off at one point at the house of a woman who had been our neighbor for a few years. Um, her husband just passed away about a year ago. It was really sad. He was only like 44. He had heart disease, didn't know it. Had a massive heart attack in his sleep, fortunately. So he left her. You know, she's like 44 now, I think 45. And they're beautiful daughters. She's 18 now. She was just a little girl when we lived there. Um, so we go to her house. We step out of the car and she sees me and she first thing she says is, wow, Kevin, you're so fat now. I'm like, wow, thanks. It's good to see you again, too. What's it been? 12 years? And it had been 12 years. So we spend about an hour or so with her at her house. She fed us. She had a wonderful dinner prepared. Um, then we get back in the car because we we're still about two hours away from where we were staying at the time. All right, look at this tree, and then I might have to go like this a little bit. I'm going to have to hold the camera like this because this tree was blocking what uh, Detecto de Brujas was detecting. So watch back here. Watch, yeah, right there. Watch. See if it moves. So we're getting back in the car to leave, and then this woman looks at me again, and she says, Kevin. I says, yeah, and I was expecting her to say it was great seeing you again, but she says, you need a haircut. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. So we get back in the car. And I'm telling dearly on the way back to our house, I'm like, wow, I got so much out of that. I haven't seen her in 12 years. And basically what I got out of that was that I'm fat and I need a haircut. And she said, she says, honey, remember where you are. It's a different culture. People just say what they think and no one gets offended by it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was a little bit butthurt. And when we got, like the following week, we got back to, well, look at that. Oh, now I got to go like this to see it. Look at it. it. Obviously, it moved because now we can see it from this angle. It's trying to stay off camera. Keep, you all think I'm crazy, don't you? All right. I know it. Brah. So we get back to our Lola and Lolo's house out in the provinces, and I'm talking to one of my, my brothers-in-law. Call him a brother. We dropped the in-laws. His name's Resty. Like, Resty, man. We went and saw this girl. You wouldn't believe what she said to me. He said, what did she say? I said, well, as soon as I get out of the car, she tells me I'm fat. And then when I'm leaving, she tells me I need a haircut. Can you believe that? And he goes, well, yes, brother, actually I can. I was like, what? Why? He goes, well, brother, to be truthful, you are fat now and your hair is too long. You, you, you could use a haircut. 
And but I laughed because there again, case in point, because this guy, he and I are like this. Every time I would leave the provinces, uh, he would cry because he's gonna miss me. And he's a 36, 37 year old man. He's just a great guy. Him and my other brothers there and cousins, we're like best of friends. The thing I love about them so much is that when I'm with them, I do not feel like a foreigner. And I think unless you've ever traveled to a, uh, if you're a, a white Western person, if you've never traveled and spent lengthy periods of time in non-white third world countries, you might not be able to understand what I'm saying, but you're just always reminded on a daily basis there that you're different. Um, you might meet somebody, a stranger, and you're talking to them and you feel like you're building a rapport and you're really enjoying the conversation, but it's just a matter of time before the little reminder that you're different, that you're a foreigner comes out. It could be something as like, you know, I wish I was in your position. And you say, how so? So I wish I was from the U.S. and my government just gave me money and I didn't have to work for it. Over here, I'm a Filipino and my government's corrupt, so I'm poor. I'm just, you know, uh, destined to a life of poverty because of my nationality. But you, you're an American, so you have no problems. You're rich and you don't even have to work. The government just gives you money. Yeah, it really happens and it happens regularly. And so we know that's BS. We know it's not true. Um, but I learned years ago, don't waste my time trying to confuse people with facts when their minds are already made up. So I don't fight that battle. Uh, but it's disheartening because it's like, wow, I've been talking to this guy or this woman for like 20 minutes and I feel human again. I don't feel like a stranger in a strange land. I feel like an equivalent, which in my eyes, we all are, right? One race, a human race. But then here comes that reminder that now nah, you're just a foreigner. So uh, when I'm with my family over there, I don't have that. It never happens. And so even though they live in a very reclusive area and uh, there's some stuff out there I don't necessarily enjoy, when I'm with them on their properties, I love it. And I would go out there and I'd stay for a week at a time, go back to the city for a few days, get some work done, exercise, and go back out to the provinces to be with the family. Um, but anyway, so that's the difference. So now I'm having reverse culture shock because I'm now back in the land of woke, butthurt snowflakes who get offended by just about everything because, and I've said this before on this channel, I, I can only control what I say. I can't control how you take what I say. And it's so common now in American culture for folks to interpret something other than what you mean when you say what you say. Example, so we were at practice yesterday and I was on the sidelines talking to Dearly for just a minute because she called me over and she'd been talking to some parent. It turns out that this this individual, had it was a woman, she had visited a third world country once for just a couple of weeks, but not long term. She never lived there. And they were talking about how grateful uh, when you when you do that and then you come back to the U.S. about how much even more grateful you are to have the life we have here. I hear people in America bitching and complaining all the time about all the things that are wrong with America, yet you don't see them lined up to leave, do you? And I've said on here before, I challenge you, go to any third world country anywhere, stay not at the resort for, for two weeks uh, with the other Western tourists and the rich locals, go out into the communities and live among the common people and stay for six months or a year and then come back and tell me more about how much America sucks. You could hear a pin drop right now because even nature agrees with me. We have our problems. We're not perfect, but we're a lot further ahead than a lot of other folks in a lot of other places. So they were talking about how grateful they were. And I said, yeah, tell me about it. I said, I am so grateful to be breathing this clean, fresh air that's not full of toxins and pollutants that's going to make me sick. And it's true. And I'm grateful for that right here, right now on my property. Where I can look around, I can see for a mile that way, because that's the field that goes out past my house and the neighbor's farm over there. See a quarter of a mile back here through the woods, quarter of a mile in all the other directions. I don't see another person. You're going to hear a car go by right now. That's You can only hear it because it's a big work truck. It's a quarter of a mile away on the road. That's the first car I've seen in 20 minutes. Oh, I'm grateful for all this. So anyway, this woman gets butt hurt because she didn't take what I said as a compliment to the greater Charlottesville, Virginia area, Central Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains. She took it as an insult to the place I just left. And so she goes out of her way to correct me. She goes, oh, oh, I, I, I think what you meant to say was that you're grateful for the mountain air. I'm like, ah, oh, sh shoot, 
reverse culture shock. I'm back in the land of Karens, right? She's 50 plus, privileged white woman. I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. I meant what I said. I'm grateful to be clean, to be breathing clean, fresh air that's not filled with toxins and pollutants that makes me sick because that has been my life for the last six months. Well, she didn't like that, so she scooted away a little bit. Good riddance. And I went back out on the field and worked with the team. But I was like, ah, oh, gosh. And then again, my wife, who's so much wiser than me, even though she's younger, probably because of her third world upbringing, said, Kevin, you got to remember where we are. These people around here get offended by everything, you know? Um, and then there towards the end of practice, here's some more reverse culture shock. Daniel did great. While we were in the Philippines, we only threw football twice, and it was only 10 or 15 minutes. We stopped both times because we were drawing a crowd of the locals, and they were started to harass us a little bit, and so we just went back in the house. Um, God, it's terrible. There's so many wonderful things about living over there, but there's so many just little. It's like uh, Muhammad Ali said, when you're running up a mountain, it's not necessarily the mountain that wears you down. It can be the little pebble that's in your shoe. There's so many little pebbles over there that just take their toll after time. Um, but anyway, he was doing great at practice. Uh, he'd got his, he had got his arm warmed up doing some drills, and then the coach is calling some plays based upon the drills they had done earlier. And then they, he let Daniel start calling the plays in the huddle. And he was nailing it, man. He was dropping dimes. Uh, his short passes were accurate. He was leading the receivers. His long passes, he would air that ball out, and that package would be delivered right at the exact moment the receiver got to where he was supposed to be uh, for about 75% of the practice. Well, then the last 25% of the practice, you could tell his arm was out of shape. It was just, it, it, you could stand there, you could tell that the arm was out of shape. Um, he starts overthrowing on the long passes. He starts throwing behind the receivers on the shorter passes or underthrowing. And me and Dearly were watching. And I just said to her, I was like, well, you can tell his arm's out of shape. And uh, Dearly says, yeah, well, there's another parent there. There's another woman, 50 plus. She goes, oh, I think he's doing wonderfully. I said, oh, he's had a good practice. I said, I, I, I really, he's done better than I thought because we've you know been overseas for six months. But he's just reached a point. It's called muscle failure. And any, you know, Listen, there's athletes, there's athletics, there's sports, there's... If you don't understand how it works, don't try to tell somebody who is a professional amateur athlete and who has coached and played sports for 40 years and stuff. So she's like, you should be proud of him. He's done wonderfully. I said, I am proud of him. I said, I'm proud of all the other kids out there too, even though they're not my sons. These kids are great. They, they showed up, they suited up. They've had a heck of a practice. I said, what I'm saying is it's going to take about a month for his arm to get back in shape. We're going to be having to work on it at home. He's going to have to be doing it at practice. She goes, he's just done wonderfully. He, and, and he's just a child. I mean, it's like she was getting so bent out of shape because I was stating the simple fact that my son's out of shape because we took the winter off. Usually we're playing basketball all winter and throwing football down here in the field on the days we don't have basketball because he's a multi-sport athlete. So whatever. Then she moved away. Um, but I did tell her, I said, you, 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 you wait about four weeks. The first two games I don't care about, especially since we're pay playing the five time defending league champions. I don't care that he's not going to really be so ready for that game. Cause when we meet him in the second half of the season and towards the playoffs, I want them to underestimate us. So, but she didn't understand any of this. Cause I guess maybe she's got that participant mentality. Hey, hand out the participation trope, participation, participate. I can't even say the word because I don't, I don't do that. I compete to win. Now, do, do we win all the time? No. Our first season, we didn't win a single game. Our second season, we only won one. But the third season, we won the league championship. Why? Because of that mentality of sh suit up, show up, practice to get better. If you only want to participate, there I said it, that's great. And, you know, hey, you're part of my team. I'm going to find the best place that fits for you. You're going to play as much as the other kids, too. That's one of the things I pride myself on is coaching. Everybody does get equal playing time. We'll find a fit for you. And usually what we do is before the season's halfway over, those kids that show up to participate, we motivate them where they want to show up to dominate. And, and, and it's in a positive way. It's not in an overbearing, angry baseball dad type thing, you know. Um but whatever. So that's the reverse culture shock I'm going through right now. I've got to remember to just bite my tongue. It's not I, my tongue. I only have one. I won't sugarcoat anything. I'll just, 
like a post I made on uh, Sick Twisted Humor on Facebook here. What did it say? Um, sometimes my greatest accomplishment is keeping my mouth shut. So that's the accomplishment I'll work toward, just keeping my mouth shut. Because I'm not going to sugarcoat crap. If you don't like the facts, change the facts. All right, is it still back there? And I'm grateful to be back and doing daily YouTube videos again. I'm going to do this for a while. And here soon, once I get a bunch of stuff out of my system, like going fishing today, um, we are going to be walking very far back into these potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch infested woods and getting up close and personal with him, her, it, or they. I might put a shirt on, might not. I'm sure not planning a haircut anytime soon. Thanks for being here with us at the most awesomest homesteading channel on the entire internet that has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading. Homesteading off the grid. See you for more next time.